child of the night That's Anna A passing delight That's Anna A will of the wisp A delicate breeze The hummingbird's wing a thundering wave, the calmest of seas, she's all of these things. So run, little man, and don't look back. Run, little man, or you pay the cost. Run if you can, if you can't, you're lost. A child of the night, that's Anna, the last star in sight, that's Anna. It's lovely to dream, but Anna's a dream that cannot come true. Once I was warned, just as I'm warning you. Somebody threw a rock through Uncle Ben's window and pinched a pair of binoculars. Any comments? One, I came across the bridge. Two, I have nothing against Uncle Ben. Three, it's too dark to pitch rocks. And four, that's the one thing I need, binoculars. And cops are not my favorite people. Take it easy. That's the talk, Anna. Hi, Blanche. Why don't you give the man back his binoculars? Of all the backhanded remarks. That's what I'm always telling you about her, Eddie. You never know where you stand with her. He knows where he stands. Both of you better watch your staff if you want to stand in good with me. Where is everyone tonight? The streets are like graveyards, houses like tombstones. Everything slowed down to a stop. When your train's going too fast, God puts the brakes on to give you a chance to think. Oh, I don't want to think. I want to drink. Do it again. You ain't paid for the first one, baby. Ain't my credit good? Bill me? Sure, but I got the landlord to think of. Take out for the first one, no? Leave the bottle. I'm choosy who I drink with. Some people have absolutely no manners. I'll take a rum cola, Noah. Let her have it, Noah. Thanks, Eddie. I'll drink it right here. At the bar. Oh, don't let me spoil the party. This is for the party. That's a mercenary atmosphere. How about a little conversation? Converse? How you been? Where is you, huh? Yeah, I've been thinking about you. And I've been watching you for over a year now. How am I doing? You get along with the fleet, but so far they haven't named any ships after you. I don't mix with admirals. Yeah. Look, I run an exclusive place uptown. We don't cater to sailors in my place, just captains of industry. Now, just you up in the right clothes, and you look natural on the arm of some tired businessman. What do I have to do? Be the hostess. Oh, you can talk plainer than that. That's all. Like I said, my club is real exclusive. No rough stuff. We just sit and drink with the customers. Break off on every drink. Of 
course, you have to learn how to smile a little. What goes with a smile? Mingle like you do down here, except you get paid for. Get paid for what? So far, you haven't said anything. Look, I run an exclusive club. What's different about your place makes it so exclusive? One thing the law won't bother you. You've got it made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm coming up in the world. Not in mine. I'd like to remedy that. What's your prescription, Doctor? Me? I'm not all business. I take a little pleasure myself once in a while. Now, working in my place, it's only natural. We spend a little time together. I'd rather do time than spend it with you. That's what you need, a couple of years softening up in a can. You're scaring me to death. Louse. Now, I'm getting mad. What's he do to you, Eddie? Hurt me on the neck with a cigarette. He almost tore my arm off. Well, now you know where you stand with each other. I'm not wasting my time with no waterfront tramps. Well, excuse me for living. Not you, but you. You better change your mind and stop being so particular. Someday you may need a pal. I've got a pal with rats. You keep it up and you will. Are you going to stick around here all night? Well, you don't have to get so tough about it. I'm only going to stay for a little while. Gee, my feet are killing me. Got a smoke? You know, they still sell them in every drugstore. Yeah, I know. But I'm cutting down on tobacco. Give me the heartburn. That's good. Hey, Noah, I'm dying for a drink. I'm dying for a cash customer. Hey, Noah. How would you like to buy a nice pair of binoculars? Go ahead and take a look through them. See what you could see. Without looking through them, I can see from one to ten at hard labor. Give them back to Uncle Ben. I didn't break that window, and I didn't steal no binoculars either. I was walking down the street, minding my own business, and there was that hole in the window, and the binoculars sitting right there on the edge. They fell in my hand. I found them. Hey, Anna, you think there's a reward for finding lost articles? I'd sure like to be found. Yeah. Gee, you look a million miles away. Get lost, will you? Get lost. Well, I was only trying to cheer you. So stay in the dumps. Who cares? Hey, where are you going to sleep tonight? Why should I tell you? All right, be huffy. I don't care where I sleep. Better go on home, Anna. I'm locking up. Here's a couple of sandwiches for the road. What about something to wash them down with, Noah? Yeah. Get yourself a cup of coffee someplace. Know where a lady can sleep for four bits? And no. Had a couple of very interesting prospects, Stanley. Yeah, but did you sell anything today? You know, you have a nasty habit of reducing everything to money. That's what I'm talking about, money. Did you take in any? You make money your god, and it'll plague you like the devil. I'm plagued by all the junk you've got cluttering up this yard. Yeah, give me a hand with this. You have absolutely no imagination. Can't you see this is a treasure trove of antiques? I say it's junk. Yes, but don't you know when junk gets old enough, it becomes antique? Now, you take this little masterpiece, for instance. Now, I can't leave this out all night. I tempt some honest man to become a thief. Hello, darling. Hi, Stanley. Uh, Did you have a hard day? You said it. Monday's always a backbreaker. I know. Well, you sit over on the couch. I'll help you with the slippers. Now, look. Look at that rip. Every time I raise my arm, it tears again. Take it off. I'll sew it. Oh, up. you sewed it up yesterday. I'll patch it from the inside. You're getting careless in more ways than one. How many times have I told you to wash your hands after handling that junk? What for? Dirt never hurt nobody. It's healthy. All that stuff about dirt and germs is just a lot of bunk. Ain't it, Frank? Hey, Ma. Hurry up with the dinner, will you? I'm starved. Oh, Frank. 
special delivery came from Pa today. Yeah? Saved the government 15 cents by bringing it up myself. Now, when Congress hears about this, I'm sure we're going to get a tax cut. I'll take it up to Pa. Why are you down here? It's time to eat. He's got another one of his headaches. Headaches? He's got a hangover. It's more than that. He's got some kind of psychosis. Psychosis bunk. He just likes to hit the bottle. That's not true. Hey, wait a minute. Who's that letter from? Hey, hey. And who'd have anything to write to Joe that was special delivery? It's from Vesma, Alabama. Yeah, probably one of his old cronies putting a bite on him. Yeah, all the folks down south think California's the gold country. Well, they ain't gonna get any of my money to send to those Alabama hicks. Matthew, you ain't got none. You little nickel snatcher. Look, I got a business, eh? I put the money I make back into the enterprise. Enterprise? Don't make me laugh. You just use that to take a job. Well, I'll ignore that unkind remark and tell you why I wouldn't give the old man a dime to send down to Alabama. Why? It's a principle of the thing. Everyone's got to make their own way. That's democracy. Everyone for himself. That ain't democracy. Democracy's all for all and one for one. Mm, you're the one. I was until you had to go and make it, too. It ain't a question of democracy. It's a question of pampering people. Now, nobody never got in the way of a pampering. You take us, for instance. Now, where'd we be if we'd have stayed down in Alabama? Where do you think we're on now? In California. Well, what's that got us? I don't know where it got you. I know where it's going to get me as soon as this tight money situation eases up. You just try walking out on me. Ain't that a woman for you? Always making the thing personal. You, where was I? Easing the money situation. Oh, yeah. Now, the country ain't never going to balance the budget as long as they keep on giving stuff away. Now, you think it's your new thing, it's your uh, foreign giveaway program. You think that's right? Sure, that's right, because but I heard a fellow telling the thing, thing, me or you? Me. That's no, not what you know. I heard a guy talking only last night, and he now, said Now, you see, that... you see, what's the use? Trouble with you is you listen to too much talk. Trouble with me is I listen to too much you. Listen, now, if you really want to know why we shouldn't send money to those Southerners, I'll tell you. Why, Frank? Because it's pampering. When they get hungry, they'll find a way to eat. And the only way to eat is to work. And the only ones who eat without working is the politicians. And just as soon as this country gets back on its feet again, that's just what I'm going to be, a politician. And that's when the country will really be on its butt. Yeah. I sure did marry beneath me. That's another trouble with the world today. Women. Hey, Ma, when are we going to eat? Now. Yeah. You don't get some solid food inside of it instead of all that candy. You'll give birth to a chocolate marshmallow. Dinner's ready, Joe. We're waiting for you. All right, Teresa. I figured it was about time. Thank you, Katie. Oh, did you have a nice nap, honey? I got a little sleep. Well, you're feeling all right then. No, Teresa, I feel terrible. Every time I try to read this letter, the words just jiggle around like bugs. Here, you read it for me, Katie. Of course, Joe. Now, we're going to hold up my dinner for this mess. I want everyone to keep quiet and listen to it. Because it's from my old friend Otis Slocum, and it's bound to be good. If he wants our old clothes, he's out of luck. We got them on. Shh. Let Katie read the letter. My dear friend, Joe LaCasta, I hope you're fine and rich in California. Here it comes. I just sold my farm because the doctor says I work too hard and got to take it slow and stay off my feet from here on. All my boys and girls got married, all except Rudolph. Rudolph's getting painfully restless for a woman. Tell him to take a cold shower. <laughs> Shut up, Stanley. Read on, Katie. Good, healthy women are scarce down around here, owing to so many of the young folk leaving this part of the country. So I gave Rudolph his share of the farm so he can get himself a good wife when he comes west. He's bringing $4,000, Joe. And I want you to pick him a good, strong woman, clean and God-fearing. I know you will do this for old time's sake, so bless you, Joe, and be good to my boy, Rudolph. Otis Slocum. What does that farmer think? You can buy a woman like you buy a pig? Sometimes pigs is a better buy. <laughs> When are we going to eat? I'll bring you yours in a trough. Four thousand dollars. That's a whole lot of money for a jerk to be carrying around. Yeah, really too much. Four thousand dollars is a lot of money, and we need it bad. Frank, you can't stoop that low. Well, if he's willing to pay for a woman and we get him one, we ain't cheating him, are we? It's business. That's what it's like. Yeah, and i got to get a whole new wardrobe after the baby comes. And we got to get a new bed for Stell and me. I'm getting tired of nailing that thing together in the middle of the night. And this family could use a second car. There's a swell Ford down at the used car lot for only $800. It's convertible, too. Stop it. Stop spending Otis Slocum's money. I won't let you. Well, you ain't got it, Jeff. Besides, you don't have to do nothing. We'll do it ourselves. I said no. He just said you don't have to do nothing. If we don't get it, somebody else will. What chances a dumb son of a gun got keeping that kind of money in this town? Don't let them do anything, Joe. It's disgusting. 
Say, Estelle, we ought to be able to get some real nice girl for Rudolph. All the girls I know are married or got kids. There's Irene's sister. But ever since she went to San Francisco, she wouldn't look at no dirt farm. How about Tom's daughter? Hey, what the devil's going on here? Give me some meat. He'd pay us to take her off his hands. Who'd you say, Stanley? Tom's daughter. Say, by George, you got something there. Mm -hmm. She'd take anything in pants. You talk to her tomorrow, will you, Stel? I'll call her up tonight, right after dinner. That's the best time to catch her. Good. Be sure and do that, huh? Mm-hmm. You've got it all figured out. It never struck you that Rudolph might have his own ideas of what he wants in a wife? You're right, Katie. You're absolutely right. We gotta get the guy something good. Can't take a chance on a false number. Uh -huh. Oh, what's the use? I know who we'll get for Rudolph. Who, Ma? Anna. Who did you say, Teresa? I said Anna. Have you gone out of your mind? No, Joe. It come to me like a bit of light. Here's our chance to give Anna a fresh start. I made a rule we don't talk about her in this house no more. And I keep that rule, Joe. We don't talk no bad about Anna. This is good for her. This is good we can do, Anna. She ain't no good, what she do for him. You're speaking of your own sister. So what? She's nothing but a slut. Don't you say that, Stella. There's no one got a right to call her that. Well, I didn't kick her out for nothing. You shut your mouth or I'll slap you down. You just try it. Nobody gonna slap my wife down with me. You and who else? Right. Now, let's settle this thing. Let's all keep our heads. Now, here's our chance to look at this thing from the human angle. What? Well, we've all got different angles. So let's just put them all together and do as I say. Now, anybody can see that Ma's right. She's absolutely right. Anna's the girl we ought to get for Rudolph, so we'll just get her. Never. Never in this world. Maybe she's changed. She don't look a day older. How do you know? Stanley? A friend of mine saw her. I, I didn't want to tell you, Ma. Tell me what? Nothing, Ma. Anyway, she's, she's looking just great. What if she won't have, Rudolph? Stop that talk. Didn't you just hear Katie read the letter? Didn't you hear Otis tell me to find his son, a God-fearing woman? Joe, you got to give Anna this chance. No! No, Teresa! Have you gone crazy? But Joe... Sh I swear it then and I swear it now. She don't come back in this house! She don't come back in this house! Well, I guess he means she don't come back in this house. No. No! Joe wants her back. It's just that stubborn, bull-headed pride of his that hates admit he done wrong. Don't know what you're doing, Ma. They only want her back to sell her like an animal. I don't know what you're talking about, child. I only know I won't have her back, that's all. I'll make Joe go fetch her. I'll break him down. You see, you see. Do you think she can make that old ox see the light? Well, if she don't, I guess I just have to have a little talk with him. If I don't get that new wardrobe, I won't be able to step out of this house. I never dreamt people could be so inhuman. At least we're not a hypocrite. Well, who's a hypocrite? You. You're not so keen on living under the same roof as a streetwalker. It never entered my head. I'd like to meet Anna. I've got a feeling she's got a lot of her mother in her, and I never met anyone sweeter and nicer than Teresa. Let go of me, Teresa. I won't let you go till you promise me you let Anna come back in this house. Get away from me, Teresa. If we don't give her this chance, we may never get another... Oh! Oh, Ma! Now you hurt, Ma! You girls take Ma on her stairs and let her rest. We've got to give Anna another chance. He just got to... That's all right, Ma. You leave him to me. Go on up with him, Stanley. I want to talk to him, too. I ain't talking to none of you. No, him. I'm going to talk to you, and you're going to listen, too. You get out of my house. We only want to get some sense into your pa. You two, get out. We're the ones who ought to be throwing you out. Who's paid the rent for two you years? You shut up. Don't tell me to hey, shut up. Hey, cut that out. Now, beat it like I told you. Go on. Gee, I hate to see that, Joe. That's bad. Your own son raising his hand to you. That's bad upbringing. You ain't done so good by Stella, either. I had a hard job housebreaking that woman. Seemed like the only one you showed any love and care for was Anna. You was real fond of her, wasn't you? I was. Yeah, she turned out to be your prize mistake. <laughs> well, that's the pity of it all, but as the old saying goes, it's the ill wind that don't carry a silver lining. Now, we can make some good out of all this bad, you and me. I know what you're driving at, so you can save your breath. Oh, sure. You ought to know I ain't the one for wasting words. There's much quicker ways of getting things done than talk. Now, why was it you kicked down her out, Joe? Why did you do it? I did what the hymn book told me. The hymn book? <laughs> now, you ain't a religious man, Joe. 
Can't even get you to go to church on Sunday. You'd rather lay in bed. No, it wasn't the hymn book. Now, Ma says it was your pride. Now, you could have never took no pride in this family. So what was it, Joe, that made you kick her out, and why won't you have her back? Because I ain't going to let you spend all this Slocum's money. There ain't nothing in this world I hate any more than I do a liar. That ain't a lie. It's the truth. You just heard from Otis today, yet you kept Anna out of this house for all this time. I'm going to give you one last chance to say the truth, Joe. So come on, out with it. Save you a whole lot of sweat. I don't know what you're talking about. There ain't no truth but what I've already said. Oh, yes, there is. You're afraid. You're afraid to admit you're done wrong. That's what's eating your guts. I did right, I tell you. I did right. What are you talking about, Joe? What's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing? Look at you trembling like an old fool. What you trembling about, Joe? Because all the things you say are lies. All lies. Prove it. Prove it by bringing her back and showing all of us you can act like a father to her. A nice, kind father, Joe. No. No. Yellow, huh? Then I guess I just have to give you a little courage. This is why you need it, Joe, right? Yeah. No. Come on. No. Come on now, let's get downtown and get you on that bus for San Diego. I can't do it. I can't do oh, it, I tell you. you got to, Joe. Maybe tomorrow. No, tonight. Stanley? Yeah? What is the name of that place your friend saw, Anna? Noah's Wharf Cafe. Is he gonna go? Your son asked you a question, Joe. I ain't got the fare. Hey, give me some fare, Stanley. Easy. That money's Katie's as well as mine. Am I gonna have trouble with you, too? Come on, Joe. Frank, is he going? Yeah, is he Ma. Really he, going? he had a change of heart. That's not good, Joe. <laughs> Come on, you're holding the parade. Yeah, when you gotta go, you can't stay. I knew you would do it, Joe. And God bless you. We're gonna have our little Anna back again. Come on. Lester boy, your fate is in my hands. Noah! I'm closed. Ah, come on, man. Open up for a hot sail on a cold night. Hey, Noah, it's Danny Johnson. Let him in. Now I'll never get to bed. Hiya, Noah. Mm -hmm. Hey, wait a minute. Don't shut that door. There's a lonesome gob out there. Lester, what are you going to do? Stand in the breeze all night? Come on in, will you? <laughs> Hello, baby. Hiya, Danny. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, the... Is it good to see you? Hey, don't handle me like a sack of potatoes. Hey, you lost weight, baby. Yeah, among other things. Yeah, but you're still a fine-looking chick. Thanks. Hey, Lester, look what I found. Well, you sure don't lose no time. <laughs> oh, this is the girl I've been telling you about. Oh, pardon me. And pardon me, is this the last of the convoy? Yeah, no, it's the last of the convoy. <laughs> oh, this is Lester. He's the cabal on the loo. He's a treasurer. Lester, I want you to know Anna Lucas. Now, once you've met Anna, Daddy, you've come up against a main event. How are you? How do you do? Looks as though you've met someone in Leicester. Now, you know I don't know anything but the best kind of people. <laughs> now, come over here and tell me something. Why didn't you write me? You know, we docked in Long Beach and took a cab all the way here trying to find you, didn't we, Leicester? That's right, but it sure was worth the cab fare. Hey, your friend's got the making. Yeah, I told him along to bring out my finer qualities. He says I'm a gentleman in the rough. I sure am rough, ain't I, baby? And don't you love it, huh? <laughs> maybe, maybe I'd better go and write myself a letter. No, man, stay and enjoy yourself. Enjoy myself? Well, uh, maybe I could order some drinks. Hey, now that's a good idea. Why couldn't you have thought of that? Because my mind's racing way ahead of that baby. Yeah, but we've got company, remember? Did you say something about a drink, Sam? Pardon me for butting in. Don't apologize. You're too good looking for that. <laughs> now, come on. Don't get him all steamed up, baby. This is his first cruise. Yeah, but not my first port. <laughs> now, come on, folks. Well, let's be and let's make it snappy. Let's bring out a big fat bottle of a beer for me. Hey, Lester, what did that cab set us back? What's the difference? It was worth our while, wasn't it? it must have cost us 20 bucks getting here. And I kept saying to myself on the ride, I kept saying, maybe she hooked some big shot. Maybe she's left town or something. Quit your jazzing. I ain't jazzing. Ask Lester. No more problems now, baby. I found you, and you ain't gonna never slip away from me again. You can bet your boots on that. Now, truthfully, what does that do to you? Does that bring out my finer qualities, Lester? Well, it's sort of... Oh, like what does he know? He likes everything plain. He's <laughs> got no taste. Wait a minute, there's something else that goes with it. Ah, ah here we are. Dig. Hey! <laughs> Danny, this looked like it's been worn before. 
<laughs> uh, let me see if I can find the rest of it. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, where's Pop? Lester, where's Papa? If you left Papa on the... Sh well, here he is. Where do I wear that? You don't wear him, honey. He's someone you're going to get to know real well. Another one of your West Indian puzzles. How do I take him apart? You don't take him apart. You treat him with respect, and he'll do your favors. Like right now, he's planning something really big for you. Do you know what he's talking about, Lester? Oh, it's a mighty big plan. Tell her who Papa is. Uh, that's a model of Ogway, the Haitian god of the sea. It seems he's good to sailors. Looks like Papa and me's got something in common. Oh, come on, honey. Be serious, will you? You see, my cruise is up in a few days, and I ain't about to sign up for another four-year hitch. What'd they do? Give you the rush? Give me the rush? Did you hear that? That's ridiculous, Papa. You know the Admiral himself got down on his knees and begged me not to leave, didn't he, Lester? I cried like a baby. What do you do now? Well, now I give me a hack. And I go back to hacking. Then pretty Papa here's gonna ride the radiator cap. There's a little matter of a previous drink for the lady. Lester, pay the man, will you? Thank you, Lester. Here, honey. Here's looking at it. Happy time. <laughs> Where'd you say you were from, Lester? Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, a real blue blood. Hey, you know this cat can even speak French? No kidding. Yeah. Say something in French, Lester. Oh, I only know a few words. I bet they're the right ones. Yeah, but like I was saying. Yes, what were you saying, Danny? <laughs> About the big plan. Yeah, you told us you're going to go back to Hacking. Well, it's only half of it, honey. You know how it is in the Navy, Anna. You get pushed around from here to there, pillow to post. Well, I figure now that I'm out, what I need now is an anchor. Around your neck. Ha, 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 ha. Funny, funny, funny. <laughs> I know what you think. You think like everybody else. You think that all I do is hang in joints like this with broads and boozing and loving, don't you? Mm-hmm. Well, that's only part of me. There's another side, too. There's a side that wants a home with someone in it. Someone you can come home to after a hard day's hacking and say... Hack me a hunk of steak. <laughs> what do you mean? She means you're looking for a cook. What are you trying to do? Louse this thing up? What thing? What are you leading up to? Look, I'll give it to you straight, baby. A home without a woman in it is just a pile of cold bricks. Now, what do you say me and you get together, huh? Are you asking me to marry you, Danny? Well, something like that. What's something like marriage? It's practically the same thing. What's the same thing? Look, honey, having a preacher say a few words over you and giving him two bucks, anybody can do this. That's mean you'd be different, huh? How different? Well, look, honey, take on the islands, for instance. Lester will bear this out. When a cat meets a chicken, they dig each other. They put a coconut in the middle of the ground. A guy comes along with a knife and goes, Psh! and like that, they're married. Did you bring any coconuts in that bag, Danny? Why don't you marry her, Danny? Lester, the talking lamp is out. Take it easy, Danny. I was only putting you on. But you said it so funny, you gave me goose pimples. You shouldn't scare me like that. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Have you gone nuts? Sure, I'm nuts. So are you nuts. The whole world's nuts. Come on, Lester, let's dance. Well, I can't dance. What's the matter? You've got goose pimples, too? No, I just can't dance. Oh, sure you can dance. I sure wish I could. I know you can dance if you want to. Lester. Break it up. Break it up. No dancing allowed. Besides, there are those who would like to go to bed. You know, that's a bad idea, baby. Hey, what do you say, Papa? Hey, what do you say about that, huh? But we haven't finished dancing yet. Don't close up. Come on, Lester, play us another round. Yeah, and smile, Lester. Don't you want to be happy? Lester doesn't know whether he wants to be happy or good. But we do, <laughs> don't we, baby? We sure do. Well, here's looking at you. Yeah, happy times. <laughs> I came up to see you and to talk to you. 
You handed me enough to last me a lifetime. You're on my territory now. I don't have to take anything from you here, so be it. Hey, who is this old guy? Boys, you've got strong nerves. Meet my old man. What's in your mind, Pop? I'd like to talk to my daughter alone. Let's go, Danny. No, don't go. Stick around. Well, you can't refuse to talk to your father. Who says I can? It's a free country, ain't it? He told me what he thought of me when he kicked me out. I'm here to ask you to forget all that and to come home with me. Why the change of heart, Pa? You think I'm loaded with loot or something? Don't talk that way to your father. Who says she can? What are you buttoning for? We still have free speech. It isn't only me that wants you home. It's the whole family. There ain't nothing wrong with Ma, is there? Anything wrong? No. No, she's well. It's just that she wants to see you real bad. Well, won't you come home with me? I can't. Why? Why the hell do you think? What are you bugging her for, old man? Can't you see you're getting her all upset? Now, you just keep out of this, Sailor. This is none of your business. Who says so? I know what she's thinking, and so would you if you use a little sense. She don't belong at home no more. And besides, you should have thought of that before you kicked her out. What right are you to talk that way, Danny? Of course she belongs at home if they want her. Have you anything better to offer? Will you quit buttoning? in? At least Lester ain't depending on Papa Agwe. If you want the advice of your number one gen pet, Lana, you'll go. At least it'll give you time to think. Who wants to spend a lifetime thinking? You might try it for five minutes. Anna, I have a bus ticket for you here in my pocket. Won't you come home with me? Stanley married one of them foster girls, didn't he? Katie. She's a nice girl. You'll like her, Hannah. And I guess Mama still makes spoon bread and peach cobbler. And she sure keeps the linen nice and fresh. Won't you come home with me? It's just three squares and a place to flop. You can have them with me, baby. Well, I was many months without them, Danny, while you were running the billows. Can we go up and get your things now, Amy? Take it easy, Pa. I've got them all on. I'll think about you now whenever I get thirsty. Yeah, you do that. You send me a postcard. You know, like X marks my window. Will you frame it, Danny? I'll tear it up. Good hacking, kid. And take care of Lester, will you? Let him bring out your finer qualities. Well, I hope you're satisfied, big mouth. You lost up my whole evening. She wasn't thinking about an evening. She was offering you a whole lifetime. Oh, Lester boy. How did you ever get in the Navy? I see you bought the car. Not exactly, Frank. I got it on a seven-day trial. Well, not too big, not too small. I approve. How do you like it? You still sell the same junk. Hey, Frank, come on. We'll be late. Oh, Stanley, it's beautiful. Can we use it to pick up Rudolph? Then exactly mine just yet. Get in. We'll be by the time we get Rudolph back to this house. Oh, you better mind. You better mind. You got to give an account out to Judge Smith. You better mind. You better mind how you talk. You oh, better Ma, mind what you talk. You talking. think that sign of Frank's is going to inspire Rudolph's confidence in this family? I think it's a very pretty sign. <laughs> Except, and I believe he would have inspired more confidence had he painted George Washington's picture up there. Got to give him a You feel hand. pretty good today, aren't you, Ma? Oh, with Anna back again. I got a feeling everything's going to be good for everybody. Ma, I think I'll quit my job and go into business with Frank. Whatever makes you happy, son. Then I guess I better look for a steady job tomorrow. I thought you two was the happiest couple in the neighborhood. She's always picking on me. I can't do anything right. 
Oh, it's not him alone, Ma. He's following Frank and Stella's lead as usual. What about? You know what they're planning to do as soon as they get Rudolph into this house. Oh, we are hoping the same thing, Katie. That Rudolph will like Anna and she'll like him. You found ain't you, Katie? You act as though you like her. Of course I do. She's an intelligent and attractive girl. I'm very considerate. But I'm not going to be mixed up in any schemes using for other people's gain. You talking to me, Katie? No, she's slamming me because I think like Frank and Stella. That if we make Anna respectable by marrying her to this country hick, we certainly rate a few of the potatoes he's carrying. Well, Katie, if they get married, I'm sure they both want to help out. You ain't suggested that to her, have you, Ma? Of course not. I'm waiting to see if Rudolph's good enough for Anna. You just live in the clouds, don't you, Ma? I feel like I was in heaven ever since Anna come home. So good just to hear her voice. Even though she do say frisky things. She made me laugh at the bus the other night in bed. Telling me all about them funny people she waited on in that restaurant in San Diego. So that's what she was slinging, eh? Hey. Yes, Daniel, that's how she lived. I always knew Anna was good at heart. Wouldn't end in the gutter because she made one slip. You think she only slipped once, Ma? I know Anna's good. Nobody can tell me different. I know that the first night she come home, cuddled up in my arms and cried herself to sleep. I know the heart was just as good and sweet as it was when she's a little baby, that same bed at my breast. One time she woke up and she just said, is it raining? And I said, yes, honey, it's raining. She said, that's nice. Went off to sleep again, just like a little baby. Joe, why ain't you down the station to help bring Rudolph? I ain't got the heart to meet him, Teresa. Glue to a stool at Mike's saloon. Yeah, that's right. Now, you keep so been tied up a bit to meet your best friend's boy. Let me alone. Come on, Ma, let's get the dinner. What's the matter, Pa? You're nervous as an old dog with ticks. The Lord strikes down them who mock their parents. Don't bring me that hymn book, Heidi Ho. I'm too fast for that mess. Uh, What's the matter, Pa? Funny writing about your hymn book. Where did you get that? Ma gave it to me. I thought I'd read for myself your gospel about dying and going to hell. There's a whole lot in here about heaven, too. And how to get there. I missed him. Beautifully. My pappy and my grandpappy used to sing and sing and sing. Beautifully. Walking to the land. Mm -hmm. He used to sing and sing until he didn't have a bit of breath left. And no more gin. Don't you call my pappy a drunkard. You, you heathen. What's the matter, Stanley? Why do you always have to bring people down? We just got part of singing. Come on, Pa. Give out with some more of that dwelling in Beulah Lane. I forgot the tune. But you were just singing it. I forgot it, I told you. Come on, Stanley, let's dance. Not with my feet. Well, how about you and me, Pa? No, no. You told me how. Remember? Let's dance, Pa. No, don't put your hands on me. I dare you. And you... Easy. Anna, would you like a cup of coffee or something? No, uh, I'll wait for dinner. You're putting on a mighty big spread for that gentleman caller. Well, it's the least we could do for the son of an old friend of Pa's. And Frank and Stella drive all the way down to Union Station to pick him up? Simple courtesy. That's a new word for it. You shut up. You're not going to shut me up. Take it easy, Katie. I know what Rudolph's coming for. Ma told me. They're not interested in making you respectable. They're just out to get Rudolph's money. Are you out of your mind? Oh, so the guy's got dough. How much? His father gave him... Forty-five dollars. Four thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it, Anna. You can't. Why not? 
Don't you want to see me respectable, like Stanley says? You'd only be cheapening yourself. Well, I'm not too expensive anyway, Katie. Where's Rudolph? Yeah, where's Rudolph? Did he come in? He came in. What'd you do with him? Oh, I took him out and bought him a couple of beers. He got real drowsy. Then I took him down to the hotel and watched him unpack. He's all set now for a long night's sleep. Tomorrow morning, I'll go down, buy him his breakfast, and take him to church. Ain't he coming up to dinner? No, he's not coming to dinner. Say, what's the mystery? You two been cooking up something. We got to get a whole new approach to this thing, Stanley. This Rudolph ain't all we bargained for. Well, what's the matter with him? Plenty. Our uh, Rudolph graduated from agricultural college. Graduated from college? With honors. With honors? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that boy's daddy sure done us a dirty trick. We're still gonna marry him off then, aren't we? Not a chance. He's too clean cut. He'd see through her in a minute. Then how are we gonna get the dough? That's the problem. Are you sure he's got it? Oh, hell yeah. He's got a wallet in his breast pocket there that makes him walk lopsided. Uh-huh. If only you hadn't listened to Ma about getting Anna. We should have got Tom's daughter, like I said. Listen, Brainstorm. Frank mentioned to Rudolph that Otis said he was anxious to get married. What do you think he said? What? Oh, that was Paul's idea. I came to California to get a job. Well, we got to keep Rudolph away from Anna. Can't have her disgracing us. Uh -uh. I'm afraid that won't be so easy. Why? Because now she's hot after Rudolph's dough. Who told her about the dough? You big flat of mouth. Katie, she gave the whole thing away. Look, can I leave you two alone for a minute? More of my back's doing some one of your gums up to work. Oh, Ma, they're back. Got to get a brand new approach. Yes, sir. I know just what it's going to be. I'm going to take the investment approach. Get him to invest his money in something special. I got to approach him through his interests. And what is Rudolph's interest? Agriculture. Hmm? Frank. Yeah. Where's Rudolph? Oh, uh, he was all played out, Ma. That's a tough trip from Alabama. When are we going to eat? He's too tired to come up to meet us all, to meet Joe, his father's oldest friend. Well, uh, uh, I explained to him that Joe ain't been so strong lately, and he agreed tomorrow would be soon enough. When are we going to eat? I never was so disappointed. Got a real southern devil for the boy. I think he's acting careless. I don't think he's showing the proper respect. Yeah, well, you're right there, Ma. He ain't showing respect, but then... Well, you know these southern hayseed. Did you tell him we were expecting him? I sure did. What can you do when a guy's all tired out and don't want nothing but bed? He was sure what, wasn't he, Sal? Could scarcely walk. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's at the front door. See who it is, Stanley. Oh, Frank, I think it's Rudolph. Well, let the boy in, Stanley. Won't you come in? We's almighty glad to see you, Rudolph. Oh, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> what knowed you anywhere? Well, he's a spitting image of his pappy when he was his age. So neat and good looking. Oh, now, Miss Lucas, you're going to get me all fired. <laughs> oh, you mustn't feel like that. You've got to make yourself at home and let me treat you like I would my own son, Stan. <laughs> it ain't right what Frank said that you're too tired to eat, is it? Too tired? Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, no, ma'am. I'm never too tired to eat. <laughs> That's the way I like to hear my sons talk. I'm Katie. Oh, hi, Katie. Hi. Excuse me. I have to get back to the kitchen. Come on in. Sit down, Rudolph. Make yourself at home. Come on. Thanks, Frank. Uh, where's Anna? Keep her up there. <clears throat> well, Rudolph. Well, I hope I'm not interrupting dinner, Frank, but I just didn't feel right not coming over to pay my respects. Oh, think nothing of it. Have a shot? I uh, mean, a drink? <laughs> no, thanks. I still feel those two beers I had with you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it takes a wise man to know his own limitations. <laughs> well, that's a good paraphrase of Socrates, Frank. Socrates? Oh, yeah, Socrates. Sure. Well, I had to meet him in college. Uh, say, have a cigar, huh? Uh, no, thanks. No? Nope. But if you don't mind. Oh, go right ahead. Help yourself. Thank you. Say, Rudolph, uh... What did they teach you in that agricultural college? <laughs> Most anything I wanted to learn. Things like plowing and hoeing, I suppose, huh? Plowing and hoeing? I knew yeah. all about that when I was ten. Uh, <laughs> he did, huh? <laughs> well, of course, I suppose there's always uh, new inventions, though, like mechanical plows and mechanical hoes. Uh, well, you ever heard of a tractor, Frank? A tra oh, tractors, sure. Oh, my, yeah. 
attractive. Yeah, you know, I was talking with a guy the other day, smart fella he was too, and uh, he had a brand new approach to these uh, attractors. Well, what was his name? His name? Oh, oh, well, you see, uh, he was just an inventor. You understand? They like to keep these things secret, you see? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gonna steal his name. Uh, no, I, I suppose not. Well, uh, let's see, what was his name? He, um... Uh, not McCormick. No, no, no. Uh, it wasn't Deer, was it? It Deer? How do you spell that? D-W-E-R-E. -E. That sound like it. Yeah, that's what it was, Mr. Deer. I remember Frank, now. He ought to know, along with McCormick, he's the biggest manufacturer of tractors in the world. He, he, oh, well, no, that wasn't the man. Uh, you, you see, uh, this was just an inventor. You understand? A private inventor he was. Oh, well, Paul taught me one thing real early. Keep away from new inventions until they're foolproof. Paul made his money with the old-fashioned plow and hoe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> What is your uh, special agricultural interest, son? Huh? Well, Frank, I'm interested in everything that goes into and comes out of the earth. Uh-huh. But in college, I, I did some special kind of work with fertilizers. Yeah. Fertilizer? That's just plain ordinary. That ain't nothing but pretzels. You ought to know someone in that, Frank. Yeah. Pretzels, Rudolph? Oh, thank you, Stella. Isn't anybody going to introduce us? Oh, uh, that, that's, uh, that's Anna. Well, how do you do, Anna? You, you a neighbor? A neighbor? Oh, did I forget to mention I had a sister? <laughs> I've been away for such a long time, they hardly got accustomed to me. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't take long to get accustomed to you. And down is a rule. <clears throat> Say, Rudolph, uh, how would you like me to take you around and explain to you about all these antiques I got here? Oh, I I'd like to, Frank. Good. Uh, Come along. Uh, later. Oh. Well. Well, where have you been living? There's something about the sea that I've always liked. Have you ever been to San Diego? Uh, no, that's the large naval base, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Lifeblood of the whole town. The Navy and the Merchant Marine. Well, what did you do in San Diego? <coughs> uh, <coughs> well, uh, wasn't that more I heard calling us to dinner? Well, I didn't hear anybody. Uh-oh, I'll go hurry up. What'd you say you did in San Diego? Well, I didn't go to college. Stanley says you graduated. Oh, yeah, just last month. <laughs> That's a good-looking ring you're wearing. Keepsake from some college girl, I'll bet. Oh, no, no, that's my fraternity ring. Yes, that is an expensive hunk of jewelry you got there. Gotta be careful with your valuables in this town. They wouldn't carry too much cash around with me. Yeah, we've met some bad people in California. <clears throat> Say, how'd you like to get a couple of beers before dinner, Rudolph? Come on, let's, let's have one, huh? Oh, no thanks. I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Oh, what the hell? Just fine. Except that it, it is a little warm in here, isn't it? Why don't you take your coat off? Uh, if you don't mind. Be real casual. Thank you. You want your tote and a gun? <laughs> no, that's my wallet. I say, Rudolph, uh, I recently came into possession of a burglar-proof safe. Now, I can take this and... Put it in the bank. Yeah, I plan to deposit it tomorrow. I'll take you down to my bank. Introduce you to the manager. You... Oh, that's Joe. I guess you remember I told you he wasn't very strong these days. Well, 
Hello, Mr. LeCaster. I'm awful glad to meet you. I've heard about you all my life. Otis! No, I'm Otis' son, Rudolph. Rudolph? Rudolph! Well, how's my old friend Otis? Oh, the pa's just fine, Mr. LeCaster. He, he sends you his very best wishes. Otis told me to get you a good wife. <laughs> so, so Frank said, that's like Pa. He, he still thinks I'm in short pants. You, you want to watch out for the women, son? Oh, sure. And the wife. If one don't get you, the other one will. <laughs> watch out for your money. Don't let nobody get a hold of it. No, sir. You better put it. You better. Buy it. You better put it down, Joe. Uh, oh, Come on now. Uh, Sit down. Let me go. Can't you see I'm talking to my old friend Otis? Well, it's too bad he can't hear you. He's a thousand miles away. That's Otis. That's Rudolph. You leave me alone. I tell you, I'll fight you. Just take it easy. Take it easy. Leave me alone, Frank. Ah. Oh. Would you like to have a cup of coffee? You. Don't you talk to me. You get away from me, I'll slap you! Stanley? Yeah. Come here. Let's go. You have to excuse Joe, Rudolph. He has a psychological problem. Yeah. He just can't seem to find the bottom of the bottle. so much of a dancer till tonight. It must be you. Was that the mamba we were doing? Ha-ha! <laughs> How do you like that? I can do the mamba. Never had a lesson. Where'd you like to go now? I'd like to go home. Uh, I haven't had as much fun in my whole life as I've had this past week with you. <laughs> Night's gone so fast, I, I didn't realize past past one already. Is it really? You, you sound tired, are you? A little. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I, I kept you up late every single night, haven't I? To you on this place, I guess, are kind of familiar, but me, I've been having a ball. It's good to be with you, Anna. Gosh, I never thought I'd be lucky enough to run into anybody like you. I'm glad you enjoyed your vacation. Vacation? I've come to California to stay. I got my eyes on a job already. Well? Valley Junior College. I set my credentials. I'm just waiting to hear now. But I thought you wanted to farm. Well, that's what I'll be teaching, modern farming. Oh. You know, it's a mystery to me how you ever got yourself into that dress. It looks like you were poor, didn't do it. Now, what do you mean by that? Why, well, is there anything wrong? Well, it isn't necessary to tell a girl how she fills out a dress. Well, I haven't said anything I wouldn't to my own sisters, and they never took offense. Well, I guess it's probably just my dirty mind. Oh, don't say that about yourself. You're just a little prudish, and <laughs> I like it. Have it your way, brother. Then we can be friends. That shouldn't be difficult. Gee, your hands are soft. Soft and cool. Like, like, like topsoil. Rudolph, what are you, just a college cut-up? Well, if that's the way I strike you, sure, I'm just a college cut-up. Well, you can't be serious telling me that my hands are like topsoil. Well, when you say it like that, it sounds silly and makes me out of plain ass. Well, I didn't mean it that way, it's just that... Well, you're such a funny kid, I never met anybody like you before. Well, I never met anyone like you, I sure never did. You seem to be looking right through people and reading their thoughts. According to you, I don't always read them right. I think that's because you don't trust people. Someone must have hurt you. More than one, brother. Well, why should anyone want to hurt you? Let's go. Mother, she seems worried about you. Why? Oh, she's afraid you might leave home again. I didn't intend to stay this long. Then you have found me altogether unattractive? I like you. That's the beginning. That's where it ends. 
Well, all along, I thought we were getting to know each other a little better. Every day. Even we didn't talk, I felt it. That we were going to mean something to each other. Then it was back on the dance floor while I was holding you close in my arms. I, I knew I suddenly lost you. What is it, Anna? Please tell me. When I was little, Papa was real good to me. He changed when the boys started walking me home from school. One of them, Charlie, was a good dancer, so Pa hated him. So he made us break up the night of the school prom. I left the house after dinner, came up here to this park. I had a feeling Charlie would come here too, and he did. We sat on this bench, holding hands. There wasn't much we could say to each other. Suddenly, Pa came tearing into the park like a maniac, calling me every name under the sun. He took a hold of Charlie and hit him hard. Then he took a hold of me. I, I'd never seen a look like that on a man's face before. He, he dragged me back to the house, forced me to pack my bag, took me down to the bus station, gave me $20 and told me never to come home again. I don't remember buying a ticket to any place. I was crying so hard. I just remember getting up in San Diego, not knowing how to go about finding myself a place to stay. Well, the fleet was in, and a friendly sailor picked me up, took me to dinner, stole my $20, and... That's the last act of human kindness I experienced. your bus. I can't leave it like this. I'm sorry I spoiled the evening for you. You didn't? I'm glad you told me things you did. You made you seem closer to me. That's not why I told you. I knew. You want to be honest with me? Well, I'll be honest with you, Anna. I love you. I want you to be my wife. Well, if you don't like this town, we don't have to live here. We... Well, we can go back home. I can teach there. We can go anywhere as long as you're with me. Honey, you don't love him. I saw the way you was kissing him. I learned how to kiss a long time ago. But don't you love me, Anna? Even a little bit. Sure, I love you. More than a little. But not enough to marry. But, Anna, honey, you told me the other night in bed you'd like to get married if the right man come along. People say funny things in bed, Ma. But I know you meant that. I know you wasn't being funny. It is such a crazy thing. A guy walks into your house to say hello, and the next thing you know, you're marrying him off to your daughter. Nobody's marrying me off to anybody I don't want. And it don't take ten days to fall in love. It only takes ten seconds. I knew that the minute I saw your face. But everybody isn't like you, Rudolph. With nothing but goodness in them to shine their faces. I know you're good, Anna. She is good. Can't you see what's happening, Anna? God has sent this lovely boy into our home just for you. He sent him an answer to prayers. Because you never had a fair chance. And the boys fell in love with you from the start. That's God's doing, too. God's giving you your chance for love and happiness. They will break his heart and Rudolph's too, are you? God can stand anything, Ma. But Rudolph ain't so husky. Oh, come on, stop fighting me, will you, Anna? Are you deaf, dumb, and blind? Didn't you hear anything I told you in the park? I heard what you said, every word. And it makes no difference. 
What are you going to do with a guy like me? Love him, child, and make him happy. Now, your ma's got the right idea. Now, come on, knock the chip off your shoulder. Say you'll marry me. At your own risk, Rudolph. I'll take it. Well, Ma, looks like we're going to lose our little Anna again. <laughs> you may kiss your brother-in-law, Stel. All right, all right. What do you want to do? Give the impression our women are loose? Well, where do you kids going to spend your honeymoon? The way Anna wants to. I know a nice little place in San Francisco. How do you know you've never been to San Francisco? Our fella told me about it. Oh, Upstairs dressing. Rudolph's down at the hotel waiting. They're not underneath any bed. I'm talking about the little bride and groom that goes on top of the cake. Well, why didn't you say so? Mm -hmm. Hey, Katie. Katie! Yes? Get the bride and groom from under Ma's bed. They're in a cardboard box. They're in a cardboard box. All right. They never can understand a woman's brain. If they don't want to understand something, there's nothing on God's green earth will make them. So just tell them there's a bride and groom in a box under a bed. They know exactly what you mean. That's easy, Frank. Women just play dumb. Men are born that way. Oh, how do you feel, Joe? I thought you was too sick to get out of bed, Joe. I feel a little better. Joe, you've come to yourself. Maybe you change your mind and take Anna up the aisle. No, Teresa, I ain't never gonna feel that good. You go on back to bed and stay there. I come and go as I please. Right now, I'm pleased to look at your wedding preparation. <laughs> All set for an orgy, ain't you? If you got it in your head, you're coming down that church and raise a lot of rucus, you better get it out. Cause one peep out of you and I'll take you out and duck your head in the sink. Oh, don't talk crazy. Why would you want to break up the wedding? Well, you wouldn't understand, Ma. You're too young and cute. Frank, answer the door. I got to get these funny looking things out of my hair. Yeah. Oh, hey, Ma. Uh-huh. Put this away in a safe place, will you? Yeah. Rudolph, what are you doing here? Well, wait around that hotel room just made me nervous. Is everything going all right? Oh, sure. Well, well how's Anna? Oh, well, just dancing with joy. <laughs> Is she nervous? Oh, well, nice and nervous, you know. <laughs> well, where's Stan? In the door. He wouldn't be in there. Oh. <laughs> Say, I sent him out to get the car washed. He should have been back an hour ago. Well, what if he doesn't show up on time? Oh, well, then I'll act in a double capacity as your best man. Be sure that everything comes out all right. You've got nothing to worry about. Hello, Mr. Lucasta. I hope you're feeling better today. I've been feeling dizzy all the morning, sir. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I got a wire from my father this morning. He sends his best wishes to everybody, and his special regards to you, Mr. Lucasta. Yeah, I can see your poor driving your maw to their wedding in that old high cart, as though it was yesterday. Well, I hope Stanley didn't have a flat tire. Oh, no, the car's carrying a spare. Matter of fact, that's the only good tire on the car. Well, maybe I'd better give you a ring of papers just in case. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Rather small, I mean, uh, little, uh, that is rather neat. <laughs> Not too expensive, but excellent taste. License, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see, uh, huh? What is that? Oh. Say, you know, these health certificates, uh, that's something new since I was married. <laughs> yes, that's what, yes, yes. Yeah. 
All nice and healthy. You're a healthy boy, all right. <laughs> you know, I was talking with a guy the other day, smart fellow he was, too. This is what he said. He said the trouble with most modern marriages is that they all contracted in ignorance. And he was right, too. He was 100% right. Yes. It's wonderful how many ignorant people get married. Ain't it the truth? It... Katie. How's Anna, Katie? Just fine. Well, well, can I see her for a second? No, it's bad luck. But I've got some important news to tell I'll her. I'll tell her. Oh, what is it? Valley Junior College has confirmed my appointment. I just got a letter from the, the head of the school. They want me to start teaching in the fall term. Oh, that's wonderful, Rudolph. I hear that's a very fine school. A real live professor in the LaCasta family. Well, who'd have thought it? <laughs> and Anna will be so thrilled when I tell her. Well, well, let me right tell now, her. you've got to get out of here. Oh, come on, Katie. Your yeah, bride will be down, and you mustn't well, see her before oh. church. Well, I know, goodbye but now, Rudolph. Oh, goodbye, yeah. Katie. Isn't Stanley back with the car yet? Oh, I sent him down to get it washed. He's probably taking a joyride. Guess I have to knock some responsibility into that boy's head. I tell you, Katie, this day is almost too much for a man to have. I had to go down to the church. Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. That's my middle name. You're certainly in the groove today, Frank. The preacher ought to let you say a few words in church. Well, ain't that some bride? Now, who would think two women could look so different in the same dress? When I wore it, you looked different yourself. There was some sort of line to show where your chest started. There's Stanley. Hey, Ma! Step on it! All right, all right. <laughs> Stella? You sure do big pretty hats. Well, Ma, you got to on upside down. Oh, well, who'd know the difference? It's all right now? You look just lovely. <laughs> My little baby. This is all I've been living for. <laughs> Mom, I love you. Okay, well, all right, let's break it up and get going. Come on. Come on, Ma. <clears throat> Don't cry, Ma. Don't cry. Wait, now, get you going. Well, as a man said four score and quite a few years ago, <clears throat> our forefathers brought forth on this continent a new nation I came to see the dean. Have you an appointment, sir? No, I don't have an appointment, but I think he'll want to see me. May I ask what it's about? I have some information concerning a teacher he's going to hire here. What's his name? Rudolph Slocum. What are you laughing about? I thought Frank would never give you the ring. <laughs> <laughs> he sure hated to part with it. How's that, Mrs. Slocum? It couldn't be better. <laughs> well, we've done it. We really are traveling together. Let's get away quickly, shall we? Let's not waste a minute. Well, honey, I've got to go to the hotel, check out, get my clothes. I'll be back in 20 minutes. But I don't want to wait for that. Can't we go now? Oh, but honey, your folks have gone to an awful lot of trouble for the celebration. We should stay at least and wait until they get back and cut the cake. Sure, let's all sit down and have a piece of cake. Oh, honey, we're not going to have our first argument just as soon as we leave the church, are we? I don't have an argument left in me. Oh, we're never going. We're going to be happy all our lives together. I'm sorry. I guess you're right. No, of course I am. I'll be back before you miss me. Rudolph! Hold me, hold me. Hold me tight enough to kill me. Hi, 
Anybody home? You're a little early. I guess I haven't started to arrive yet. Mind if I wait inside? Yeah, make yourself at home. Thanks. Hello, baby. Don't take your coat off. Why? You've, you've got to get out of here right away. Hey, what's going on here? What are you all dressed up for? A fancy dress ball? I've just been married. Oh, come on, Anna. Don't shake me up. Hey, it does look like somebody's been married. But it couldn't be you, could it? Why not? Because I just got this letter that you sent me and I beat it down here like you asked me to. Look, Danny, I thought after two days here I wouldn't be able to stand it. That's when I sent you that letter to come down and get me, but... But a lot has happened since then. Oh, go on. You ain't married. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, who was that guy that just left? My husband. Oh, what do you know? What do you know? Hey, what happened, kid? Did that funny old man of yours try to put something over on you? No, it's on the level, Danny, and it's of my own doings. Well, who is this guy, and where did he come from? He's the swellest guy I've ever met. When did you meet him? When I came home. What did you do, baby? Put something in your drink? I don't know, but I'm sure floating. Oh, come on, baby. You're talking to Danny Johnson, remember? Well, you're a swell guy, too, Danny. Well, thanks a lot. You don't have to con me, Anna, ever. Come on, what's the gimmick? Is the heel loaded? I wouldn't care if he didn't have a nickel. Oh, then he is loaded. Well, that makes all the difference in the world. What is this stuff? Look, Danny, you're a good sport, aren't you? It all depends. What's on your mind? Will you beat it? Will you get out of here before he sees you? Are you ashamed of me? No, you know better than that. I'm in love with the guy. You should tell me that too, babe. I didn't. I couldn't have. I... I didn't know what it was until now. You sure made me feel like it every time we came in the port. Well, I was always glad to see you, Danny. I even missed you when you were, when you were away. But, but you and me, we were just two kids out to get our kicks into hell with tomorrow. That's the only way to live. What are you planning to do? Spend your life married to some guy who kisses you goodbye at breakfast and goes off to the office while you stay at home baking pies? Then he comes back and plays the fiddle to you? That's horrible. Rudolph isn't a bit like that. Rudolph? You married a guy named Rudolph? Anna, that's not a name. That's a cigar. I'm sorry you don't like his first name because his last name is Slocum. Rudolph Slocum? He sounds like a farmer. That's what he is. Oh, no, I don't believe this. I, I, I just do not believe that you would marry a farmer. You know what I ought to do? I ought to punch him in his mouth. In fact, that's what I'll do. I'll wait here. When he walks in the door, I'll beat his brains out. It's very simple. You're getting out of here. Right now. And leave you with this farmer. Don't be ridiculous. He's not your kind. You'd go crazy in a week without the lights and the swing and a guy that can get you in the groove. And that's what I'm here for, Anna. That's what I'm going to give you. I'm through with that, Danny. I don't want it anymore. Oh. You can't get away from it. Anybody looking for it, Anna, can see it in your eyes like I did the first flash I got of you. You don't belong to one man, baby. You'll never belong to one man. You can't. Yes, I can. I know I can. Damn you. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to scare me. I'm trying to save you a lot of grief, baby. You and me, we're real people, Anna. We're the real stuff. Many of the time we set the earth on fire, you stick with me and we'll burn it up! Uh, are, you, are you finished? Yeah, I'm, I'm finished. Now will you leave? Yes, I'll leave. And please don't try to see me anymore. I'll remember that. I'll remember that when you come crawling back to me. And when you do, I'll probably take you back. Because I'm just about as weak as you are. Oh, Anna. Goodbye, Danny. I'm saying goodbye, baby. How do you do? How do you do? A nice car you have outside there. Thanks a lot. Danny just came down to offer his congratulations. Is that so? Yeah. Congratulations to you too, Pop. You ought to be a very happy man today. I've seen you someplace before. Yeah, in San Diego. Yes, you're the sailor that was kissing her at the bar. Well, you know how it is, Pop. What's a little kiss between friends? Nothing, nothing at all with folks like you. I'm sorry we don't have time for a sermon, but I've got to go upstairs and get dressed. And Danny's anxious to be on his way. Beat it, Danny. Yes, you'd better hurry, daughter. You don't want to keep Danny waiting. Oh, he's not waiting for me. Go on, Danny, beat it. You'd better wait, Danny. 
She'll be needing someone. What for? To take you away. I'm driving away from here in a few minutes with, with my husband. You think so? You think he'll still want you when he knows all about you? He does know. I told him everything, Pa. I mean everything. Honest, I, I tried to talk him out of it, but he wouldn't listen to me. I know it's hard for you to believe that because you despise me so. But it's true. Won't you please try to let me make good now? And if I mess it up, I promise you one thing. I won't bother anybody anymore. Nobody will ever see me again. I'll know what to do and where to go. You are just what you are. Nothing on God's green earth will ever change you. Now, wait a minute, Pop. Why so fast in the trigger? Besides, what's the percentage of you bust up your little girl's wedding? Shut oh, up, Danny. Pa, I've got happiness in the palm of my hand. And if you mess it up, I swear I'll kill you. And I don't care what happens because there won't be anything worth living for. Baby, you don't have to do no killing. If you want his mouth hushed, I'll fix it so Rudolph won't understand a word he's saying. Rudolph don't have to hear a word from me. I don't have to tell him. What have you got on your mind? Teresa told me he was getting a job somewhere near here teaching. He is. Is he? You got something to say, old man, you say it. I don't have to say it. It's been done. What's been done? I paid his dean a visit. We had a nice talk. He agreed he shouldn't hire a teacher whose wife might teach his students something they can't get from books. You crazy old idiot. You're not protecting him, you're destroying him. And wherever else he tries to get a job, I'll go and see that dean too. Weren't you satisfied with messing up my life? Must you mess up Rudolph's too? You don't care what man's making love to you, just as long as it's a man. Go back to your three square meals and your flop for daddy. Come on, honey, we better get out of here. I don't like the way he's acting. Get the old idiot! Get the hell out of here! Get you. Oh, take the heart of here! Put it in your damn car! Drive with a hell! <laughs>
treating you. Hi, Nola. How are all the animals in the smelly old ark? Meet the world's greatest lover, Danny Johnson. Danny, meet Noah. Blanche, meet Danny. Danny, meet Anna. <laughs> Don't stand there, ma'am. Bring out the best. Ain't nothing too good for my old lady. What are you using for money? If I had money, I wouldn't be here. Come on, no, you know I'm good for it. Bust loose, will you? Yeah, bust loose with the cork and let the gin flow. Oh, what's the matter, Noah? Are you paralyzed? You've both had enough already. Enough? I never got enough of anything. I just got started. Great idea you had coming here to your friends. Your friends wouldn't even let us in. Oh, Anna, if you wish, you may stay at my place tonight. Never mind. I know that old gag. Let's all pitch in together. I'm pitching in with Danny. Didn't I promise to love you forever and ever? Or was that some other guy? I'm thirsty. Hey, Noah, come on. A couple of beers, huh? Beers? What's the matter? You going cheapskate or something? You been flinging the dough pretty good, kid. Come on, spend it. Mine's double gin. You ain't getting <laughs> even a beer, Anna. Hey, what are you doing? Look, I'm no mooch, baby, and when I'm broke, I quit, and so does the broad that's with me. But I can't stop now. We gotta keep going. Honey, I'm with you all the way, but we've used up this talent, that's for sure. But we gotta go, 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 Danny. Time's a wasting. Honey, get your hooks out of me. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm thinking. I smell wood burning. Well, that's funny. That's real funny. Welcome to the party, man. You're drifting. You know, sometimes I can't ever figure out how I got mixed up with a broad like you in the first place. I never asked you for nothing. Oh, no, not much. Just every stitch you got on your back, booze by the case, and spending the green stuff like I was printing it myself. It's not fashionable to go broke in this town, Danny. You're out of style. I told you, Anna, to quit pushing me. Who's pushing? That's what you need is a good push. You... <laughs> no, that's what you'd like, isn't it? <laughs> Well, I'm not about to go to the chair for beating your brains out. That's exactly what I do with another night of you. Go ahead and laugh. You know what she did? She busted up my cab. Papa Hartway was riding the radio to and she knocked his head clean off. And busted my luck with it. If she busts your luck, why you keep tagging along with her? Six months pay gone down the drain in one lousy week. And for what? I'll hit the road. Who needs you? You bet I'll hit the road, baby. I must have had rocks in my head to carry you this far. And I'll take this if you don't mind. I don't figure on keeping up the payments. Oh, it's not up to the piece of junk anyway. I stopped running the moment I kissed you. Yeah, you kissed me, all right, baby. You're the kiss of death broad, that's you. Well, Danny Johnson's got a lot of traveling to do and a lot of living to do, and I'm checking out. And don't bother writing me any letters. Because from now on, I'm sticking to women who only have one thing on their minds. Me. Danny! Anna, I was just talking to Eddie over at the chambers. Seems like he's given the gate to one of his girls, and now she's trying to make out like he was beating her up. At the very same time, he was down here getting a hole break in his neck by that cigarette you pushed into him. You remember that night, don't you? Now, heaven knows you never give me no reason to do you no favors. But when I see somebody throwing themselves away like you are, it's just my natural instinct to try and save them. And I don't care what you say. Eddie's a swell guy, and he needs you for a witness to prove he wasn't even in the chambers that night. So if you go to him and tell him you'll stand by him, you could have his shirt. In fact, you could move right into the job he just threw that broad out of. No thanks, Blanche. Now you look at here, Anna. You can't go around kicking every man who likes you in the pants. Pretty soon there'll be none left. Why don't you go haunt some other bar? Oh, don't you rush me. Anna? You can't fight Eddie off forever. And besides, you'd be doing me an important favor with him. Hi, Anna. Good night, Blanche. All right. I'm leaving already. Anna, there's a nice breeze coming right off the ocean. Oh, oh well. with you.
You would look ridiculous on me anyway. Planning on shipping out, huh? Rio. What? Rio de Janeiro, you know, Brazil. That's a spot. Brazil? I saw that on a map once. That's at the bottom of the world. No, it ain't. Same distance below the equator that we are above it. And the climate's even nicer. You been there? Oh, yeah, lots of times. We had a cousin that runs a soft drink joint down there. Let me see, the Iberia leaves tomorrow night, the Hispanita on the 20th. Hey, I know the mate on the Hispanita. I can probably work my passage over. Take me with you, Danny. I intend to. First, I gotta work your fare. Well, I can work, I can do anything. I'll, I'll shovel coal. Honey, ships today use oil. I'll have to buy a ticket. Sir, you can. Can't, it's in Hawk up to the hill. Wait a minute. Hispanita on the 20th. If I were around the clock, hacking, we could make the one on the 20th. No, let's take the one tomorrow night, the first one that's leaving. Honey, relax. We'll go. Two weeks ain't gonna make that big a difference. It will to me. Hey, you know, my cousin must be really busting them up down there. Imagine a place where there's a booze drawn on every corner and they're just getting used to soda pop. Hey, that would be a good business to break into. On the cuff? Thanks. Maybe if we went down to the wharf, the skipper on the Iberia will give us a break. No, in your life. I know that skipper. You'd have better chance cutting bait with a shark and getting the favor from him. Maybe I could sweet talk him. That's out. I don't even want you to joke about it. I wasn't joking. I said we'll go and I can pay your fare. Let's get out of here tonight, Danny. I gotta. Now, let me think. Maybe I can hit no one on the head. You ought to be good for about 20 bucks. For 20 bucks, you'd have to kill me. <laughs> That's funny. What? I've got money. You been holding out on me? No, it's the money Rudolph gave me to buy my trousseau. Well, where is it? I hid it in my room. Well, come on, baby. There's still gas in the gap. Let's go. Well, what's wrong? Nothing. It's yours, ain't it? I mean, he gave it to you. Honey, Brazil. And we'll never come back to this place again. What for? We only have bad times to remember here. I wish we were on that boat now. Soon, baby, soon. I better wait here. Oh, it's Sunday. They're all in church. Come on. Why? It's not here. Are you sure you put it there? Why? I thought I put it in that doll. Oh, honey, this is no good. You can't find it rummaging around like this. Relax and take your time. Close your eyes and think. Honey, will you... Honey, will you sit down and listen to me? <laughs> uh, now, with that kind of money, baby, we can buy two tickets and travel cabin style. Uh-oh. Who's that? The old man must be in his room. Let's get out of here. You better give a look. He's just sleeping off a drunk. Uh, he sounds sick to me. He ain't sick or drunk. He's dying, Anna. I couldn't even hear his heartbeat. I tell you, Anna, your old man's dying. Just a month too late. A lot of good that's gonna do me now. That's a terrible thing to say. Now, you go over there and you say something to him. You hold his hand, make it up if you have to, but do something. I'll go call the doctor. Where's the phone? In the living room. I'll go. No. You stay here. I'll go.
Hey, you. You have a good day at school, school today. The teacher give you some homework. I'll help you with your homework. My little smart baby. Someday you're going to grow up and be a real fine lady. <laughs> now then, if I'm not working next Sunday, I'll take you to the zoo. Remember that old elephant? He, he, he remembers you. Remember how he took the peanuts that you gave him? That's because he liked it. And he knows that you like him, too. And I'll have to smart that way. Wait. Oh. <laughs> My little, little, little baby. Oh, good Jesus. Sweet, sweet Jesus. Look after it. Watch over my little. Baby. Not to some honest. He kept calling me Angel, like he used to when I was little. I didn't know what to say to him. All I could do was sit here and watch him die while he prayed to Jesus to watch over me. Oh, Bob! did make an extra long sermon. You've got to speak to that man. He sure takes good care of the soul. But the state of stress the world's in today, a man's got to have a pretty good pair of kidneys. You know, I was reading the medical journal the other day, and the doctors say the chief trouble with modern day civilization is a headache. And you know what a headache is? It's a message from the stomach to the brain. Don't send down no more garbage. <laughs> 